Welcome back, listeners and even viewers to the Arcade Attack podcast. I've got another amazing guest on today's show. Someone who very kindly gave us a text interview many, many years ago now. I think 2017, it was that long ago. But we've got Dave Grossman in the flesh on the podcast. A true LucasArts legend. Thank you so much for your time today, Dave. Much appreciated. Uh, thanks for having me. And I love that uh, you think 2017 was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's great. Uh, if you watch UK politics, it's a, <laughs> a very, very long time. But <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's hard not to see them. Much. They certainly are um, visible around the world at the moment. Oh, it's crazy right now. But anyway, that's that's not really the point of the interview. But um, look, Dave, we're going to talk a bit more towards the end of the interview about Return uh, to Monkey Island, a huge, you know, already a huge success it's only been out for a few weeks really but congratulations on that but before we get into that site that sort of recent part of your career are you happy to kind of start at the beginning and see how things evolved over time yeah sure awesome let's, um, let's take a stroll down memory lane shall we? yeah we've had quite a few um legends of lucas arts on the show and i always like to know how you got the op opportunity to work in such an iconic company because i think you were, you were there from quite early days so i'd love to know how you got the job was it your first role in the video game industry and just, just filling the gaps that's all right Dave it it certainly was and and it was sort of a, one of these happy accidents um the year was 1989 and um I had been in graduate school studying artificial intelligence of all things I was uh I was not specifically looking for a, com a computer games job I was just looking for a computer job and I was in the career center at UC Berkeley and paging through uh, these uh, folders full of uh, paper ads for, for um, calls for people for different companies. And I saw one from Lucasfilm. I was like, oh, didn't know they made uh, computer games, but that actually sounds really fun. So I went and applied and I, um, I had been looking for a job for a number of months, actually. And fortunately, for me, a thing that I'm not very good at, apparently, is looking for work because I hadn't found anything up to this but i'd only been on a, a couple of interviews and thank goodness i didn't get any of those jobs uh because i would have missed out uh, on, on this one so uh, yeah basically i answered an ad and i went up to skywalker ranch and i had an interview there which was i've talked about this a few times uh me on one side of the table about six people on the other side of the table um it was one of these like panel interviews. Ron Gilbert was there and Gary Winnick was there. And uh, it was early in the morning and I was kind of intimidated and didn't really actually go all that well. And sort of midway through, uh, Ron put his pencil down on his on uh, my resume and he said, well, you know, I'm, I'm quite busy. I got to get out of here and go do some other stuff. And then one by one, everybody else did the same thing. <laughs> And, uh, and I, I just felt like something had gone wrong. But, uh, you know, David Fox was sort of seeing me out. And I said, uh, you know, I feel like something went wrong there. But, um, you know, don't mistake my uh, sort of casual attitude and sleepy eyes for disinterest. I actually would really like to do this with you guys. And uh, I, he took pity on me and, uh, and, and they hired me, which is, is a good thing. I would later learn that um, that thing about putting your pencil down on the resume was like a, that was like a sign <laughs> that people had. Like, really? yeah, I'm done. Yeah, no, 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 no. Let's move on to the next. Wow. One. So you. You were close to not getting the job, or you think that's fair to say? That must. It wow. seems like it. I mean, I, I don't know. Um... Crazy. But before you joined LucasArts or Lucasfilm Games uh, originally, were, were you a big fan of LucasArts, the kind of movies and, and so forth? Or? Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say a big fan. I mean, I enjoyed. I enjoyed Star Wars. Certainly, I was exactly the right age for that. I was twelve yeah. when that hit the theaters, and uh, my best friend had a sister who worked at the theater. Uh, wow. And so when it hit my town, she got a little advance notice and we went to the first screening, which was in the middle of the afternoon on a, a school day, I think. And so I have in my my collection of personal memorabilia. Um, you can't tell what it is unless I say what it is, but it's a ticket stub with the number 20 on it. And that's my that's my ticket from from uh, opening day of, of Star Wars. Um, but I wasn't I, you know, I th think they were trying not to hire super fans actually mm -hmm. they were they wound up being a couple there and they had sort of hidden that fact during their during their interviews because right. they didn't want to come off too like too geeky uh, which is good because we couldn't make star wars games anyway you know the, the star mm -hmm. wars rights were they were doing fine just licensing the, licensing those out to everyone else in the world and so we got to make original properties which was fantastic of course yeah and um uh, so you joined in 19 was it 89 you said then is that right yeah 
And what was your first role? Because I've I've spoken to Tammy Borowick in the past and Brad Taylor, and they kind of went through like a university thing at the start. I don't, yeah. Again, I don't want to put words in your mouth. But was that something similar for you? Or Yeah, we were the first group. It was me and Tim Schaefer and Jenny Sward and Ron Baldwin were the other the other two people. Jenny teaches at DigiPen now, actually. Wow. She's like a dean or something. Um, and, and yeah, we were the test group. They had um, developed the SCUM system for Maniac Mansion and then used it um, for uh, the Indiana Jones game after that. And I guess the idea was, you know, let's get some more people in here. Um, we're going to try and uh, expand a little and make some more games. And we're just going to sort of get them in here and um, teach them to make games and use our tools. And then we'll have a big group of designers and that'll be great. So yeah, it was like um, the the first little bit of it was it was called Scum University. And it was just here's how to use the tools, and I think they were sort of evaluating us at the time. They gave us some some art that right. Steve Purcell had drawn of Sam and Max's office, and just said, you know, here's how you mark out the spots on the floor where people can walk, and here's how you make them talk, and you know that that kind of thing. And then they just kind of cut us loose for a little while. We made these weird little projects. Um, I got I got bored and I went out and got some more art from artists who were in the building. So I, you know, I and I found some old Maniac Mansion art, and so I built this sort of big um, house. And I put in a puzzle where if you touched the banister, it would activate a teleporter that would zap you up to a spaceship deck. Wow. Somebody had drawn a spaceship deck. I think that was Mike Ebert. And when you did it, there was a fly that flew in with you, and so it was a little uh, you know the fly puzzle where Oh, Max wow. uh, gets half mixed with this fly, and then you have to chase the fly around the deck of the spaceship to get it back <laughs> into the teleporter to, to put him back again. So I think that that, that might have gotten me onto uh, Ron's project, because the, the, the very next thing was, hey, um, I'm starting this, uh, this game, Monkey Island. Uh, do, do you guys want to come and work on it with me? Wow. Uh, all hail Jeff Goldblum then, I guess, because... <laughs> <laughs> what what a film the fly is isn't it such a great film um i'm i'm hearing sort of i'm getting sort of day of the tentacle vibes and that kind of puzzle i don't know if that's um maybe um, again i don't know if that's kind of a hint maybe what your brain was thinking early early yeah doors, but... i mean I, yeah there's 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 no time travel in that one yeah um, you know it's, it's uh yeah i could i could see that in, in tentacle it's maybe cartoony enough anything that a cartoon would spoof i think it's fair game for for day of the tentacle that was, the, um, but, that was definitely the vibe we were going for with that one. I've I've got to ask about Monkey Island because um, I played it as a kid. I to, I was blown away. I didn't know games like that existed. I didn't know about Maniac Mansion before, and it, I've just unbelievable game. I, it's one of my favourite genres since. Um, how did you um, get involved in that exactly? What what had Ron already done beforehand, and what was your exact role on the Secret Monkey Island? Um. What had Ron already done? Oh, on, on, on the game. Well, he had been kicking the idea around for a while, I guess. Um, it, it actually predates um, the Indiana Jones game, uh, to hear him tell it. Uh, it. Back then, it was called Mutiny on Monkey Island, I think. And he was sort of figuring out what it was going to be like. And then they had this emergency. We need a we need an Indiana Jones game. We only have nine months or something. And so he and, and Noah Falstein and Dave Fox all collaborated on that one. And then once it was done, they were like, well, let's, you know, let's get some more people in and we'll, we'll, and we'll get this Monkey Island thing rolling. So it had a, you know, I mean, it had a basic pitch, which was um, we, we wanted to feel like you got off the ride at the Pirates of Caribbean and Disneyland and, and were interacting with those people and sort of living in that town and doing stuff there. Um, and by then I, I think it was going to be a comedy. I don't remember talking about whether or not it was going to be funny. We just sort of made it funny. Um, but there was, uh, you know, it was still early in the design. We had to sort of um, break everything down and, and make up a bunch of puzzles. And so there were lots of uh, meetings uh, of Ron and, and Tim Schaefer and I, um, and sometimes other folks, uh, Noah Falstein was in there a few times and Steve Purcell would, would be there sometimes. Uh, and we would just sort of brainstorm stuff and, you know, there was the basic outline for the story, but we needed to sort of figure out like, how are you going to complete these three trials and become a pirate and do all that stuff. Yeah. So there was a, a lot of that in the early days. And then once we started, um, nailing things down, it was up to Tim and I to implement most of it. So that was the sort of the programming side of our job and it was really programming light because the scum system was built to, um, mm -hmm. 
take care of a lot of the nuts and bolts of sort of walking characters around. So it was a little bit like uh, writing a little teleplay where you say, you walk over there and hit your mark and then say this line. And uh, whenever the player clicks on this, then we're going to play this little vignette and you know, that, that, that kind of stuff. So it was almost like um, directing a little play. And as part of that, we had to make up the things that people were going to say. There wasn't a script or anything. It was just like, here, here's implement this room. It has these puzzles in it and these scenes and just go for it. So, you know, that was a, 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 an unusual chance to just sort of stretch our legs and write a bunch of stuff, um, which turned out to be the funnest part of the job and uh, maybe the part I was best at. I mean, I, I imagine there were some huge jokes and laughs in those sort of meetings with Tim and, and Ron in the I mean, was it was it quite serious actually or how would you describe it? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, there was a lot of nonsense in those meetings. Yeah. Um, yeah, if we weren't making ourselves laugh then uh, uh, we weren't doing, we weren't we, we weren't in the right tone for the game, right? It's supposed to make other people math laugh. Uh, you, yeah. you, you get a laugh too. Um, I hadn't developed my my stone face by by that point and so i did laugh a lot and I, I would get asthmatic in these meetings all the time and just wind up coughing my head off which you probably remember um these days like you know i really it takes a lot to um to get a good belly laugh out of me but i still have a great time with with ron just uh, you know kind of going back and forth and thinking of absurd ideas and crazy puzzles it's good stuff i mean um is there any puzzles or jokes in particular in the first monkey island you, you're most proud of that you that you've personally came up with uh, Dave, for example. Ooh. Um, well, there's the gag with the rubber tree where he falls off the cliff. That wasn't in anybody's script or plan for anything. It was just a little throwaway gag that I decided to do one, you know, it was like after dinner and I was there working late one night. I was like, hmm, this, lo this looks, uh, right. the, the, the cliff looks unsteady there. At first I wasn't, I wasn't sure if I was missing something. Was there supposed to be some kind of a puzzle there? But no, there wasn't. The artist had just drawn it like that. And I was like, I think I'm going to make something out of this. So that was pretty that. fun. Um, was the, that a little dig at Sierra online games? Oh, it was a could... big dig at Sierra. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> yeah, we were, you know, Sierra was um, sort of always making us look bad in terms of sales numbers. And we felt a little, <laughs> a little defensive about that. And, uh, and we, you know, I found their games fun but frustrating um just be, not because you died a lot but because it was always so unfair when you did you would just be you, like curiosity was punished and i didn't feel like that was a good approach for a yeah. game i felt like you should you should feel like you can go around and touch everything and it's going to be okay i mean it, what a masterpiece i mean i bet i bet there was a lot of ideas or even gameplay mechanics puzzles characters that you thought about discussed but didn't quite make it in the final game is there any um any interesting stories or things that didn't quite make the final cut if you remember correct dave oh man well i mean you know that's sort of a constant part of the process right as you come up with ideas and you throw them out immediately <laughs> you know every every brainstorming meeting generates five times as many ideas as you're ever going to use uh and and a big part of it is just sort of figuring out uh, you know, which, which are the things that we actually should pursue. Um, not a lot of things get very far, I think, before we throw them out, but there is there definitely are revisions. And I, I remember on Monkey One, um, there's, there was, there used to be a big set of puzzles in the governor's mansion about oh. getting the idol. And there was, we were talking about, um, there was going to be a guard who was in a chair and I think he was sleeping or something, but you couldn't get past him without waking him up. And you needed to, there was a stream of ants and some honey or something like this. And you were going to make a little trail out to him. And oh. we were just sort of brainstorming on this and trying to knock the kinks out of it. And it just felt very um, unsatisfying in some way. And then in the middle of one meeting, I was like, oh, I should just put the whole thing behind a wall and you don't, you don't see any of it. And, uh, you know, it's just, you just uh, jump back there and a bunch of stuff happens. And I, I said it as a joke, but everybody was like, oh, yeah, you know, we could do that. <laughs> no, it's not a puzzle exactly, but um, it could be fun. And then you just sort of come out and you need item X. And, you know, we just make a make a big um, self-referential joke out of it. And they said, uh, OK, Dave, that was your idea. Let's let's see it. Wire it up. God, so great. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, you're the man to make it happen. <laughs> yeah, but it was fun. I mean, you know, it's, it's, I, I had a good time with the you know, sort of getting into the guts of the um, sentence building system, 
subverting it to my own ends and building that little scene out of it. I mean, huge success. Uh, still spoken about a lot today, the original, and, and obviously it's, it's spawned many sequels, which we'll, we'll talk about soon. But why do you think, Dave, uh, The Secret Monk Island was such a success? And, and it, it, it's gone on to be regarded as one of the best, well, you know, games of all time. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Uh, I, you know, I mean, I, I, th I think we did do some things right. I think that the tone is very approachable. Um, it's sort of light and airy, but it's got its serious side too. So there's a little something there for everybody. I, I, I like comedies best when there's something underneath them that I, for me to care about. Yeah. Um, you know, and Monkey Islands is kind of a story about a, uh, a guy embarking on a career essentially, and then finding out what's important to him. And that's, we were all doing that at the same time. So I think we put some, put some heart in there and maybe people are picking up on it. I don't know. Um, but you know, I mean, apart from that, I, you know, who can say why yeah. um, people are, are still sort of picking it up today and, 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 and discovering it and liking it. Well, that's, a, that's a, that's a, that's a question you should ask the audience. <laughs> yeah, then, true. When you find out, come, come tell me. Um, well, I, I'm a big fan, so I definitely, definitely tip my boxes. Def definitely. When when it was shipped, then when Secret Monkey Island was shipped, um, what was, was your role then? Were you straight onto Monkey Island Two, or was there like a little projects in no. between? Was discussions or? Um, no, we split up briefly. Um, Tim went straight on to Monkey Two, and I went on to the Dig. I was working with Noah Falstein on our uh... for, the very first version of the Dig for a little while. And that was a that was a game that kept coming back uh, over over and over. Um, um, it didn't it didn't uh, that first uh, iteration of it didn't last long because um, I think there was pressure for the studio to actually um, account for its expenses and start making a profit, right. <laughs> which you know we've been sort of relying on. Uh, you know we're part of a giant film company and. In, in those early days, there there was not a lot of pressure on us to do anything other than make stuff that was fun. Uh, but every now and then, you know, someone would come around and say, what are, what are you guys actually doing in here? Um, it doesn't look like any of these projects are going to hit their schedule. And let's just um, sort of uh, pick, pick some of them yeah. <laughs> and put all the people on those and, and continue. So we, we put uh, the dig onto the shelf for the very first time after a few months. And I went on to the to join the monkey crew after that and i you know it was good i i felt good being back on monkey island again actually it was, i liked could, the humor and wanted to kind of wanted to be there uh, we could probably spend a whole hour talking about the dig and its development and how it finally came out and i i like the dig by the way i think it's a good game but i think the game i've played is probably quite different to the one that you started work on is that fair Oh yeah, because um, yeah, it, it sat on the shelf for a while, but um, nobody was willing to give up on the idea that we could put Steven Spielberg's name on a box. I think, mm. I think frankly, the um, people were kind of the beans were excited about that, and so um, it got picked back up again uh, by Brian Moriarty later. Um, but he just wanted to start over, so he actually started from scratch and and started yeah. building a new engine too. He didn't want to use the Scum system for it, you know? right? Um, before before I forget, actually, did you ever get a chance to meet Steven Spielberg or George Lucas at your time at Lucas <laughs> Lucas Arts? I did. I, did. Um, I would. I I met George a couple of times during. I mean, I worked there for five years. Um, you know, as a sort of an underling and as a project leader, he would come around about once a year just to kind of check in on us. But he, he wasn't all that all that interested. I did. I did take a meeting with him and Steven Spielberg um, together right at the beginning of the dig. And it was, uh, I think, uh, Noah, Noah Falstein was leading the project and Ron Gilbert was there and, and me. And and it was you know, it was ostensibly to toss around ideas for this thing. And so I insisted right. on being there, but I was really intimidated by people in the room <laughs> and especially by George and Steven who have a like, a, uh, you know, they've been friends a long time and they just had a kind of a lickety split whirlwind dynamic together. So they did almost all of the talking. Uh, just between the two of them and 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 ron and noah would um jump in occasionally and, and get a word in and i just basically watched the whole yeah. thing it didn't really come to much it must have been pretty incredible still um yeah good times um well let's talk about monk island too because i again 
loved it on the Amiga. I think there's about 12 discs on the Amiga version I had. It's absolutely incredible. But what what a great game that was. Um, I mean, what was your main aims? Your main sort of did you have it? Was it exactly the same as Monkey Island One? Did you or was it? We've got to take it this direction. I mean, what was what was the you know? Oh well, um, I mean, we did the we were making uh, some differences in the art actually uh, at the time. I think that was when we got the scanner, hmm. um, which was exciting. It meant we meant we could um, instead of drawing stuff on the computer, we could. Um, do a do a painting and then scan it and then touch it up, which is a, kind of going to get us a, a completely different look. It was very cool. And the scanner was, you know, it was just like a flatbed scanner that you see now, um, All right. except slower, and it cost ten thousand dollars. <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> and it, it was pointed out to us very uh, concretely. This machine cost ten thousand dollars. Do not break it. And you had to, you know, kind of reserve time on it. There was only one. It was over in the art building. And I'd go over there after hours and scan stuff to put on the um, desktop of my, my Macintosh. Oh, nice. um, but it did make the make the game look really different. Um, from from our end, um, designing the thing, it was really, uh, it wound up kind of being about making a sequel. Um, we're, we just can't seem to get out of making these games about ourselves, really. Uh, so, so the, the, I mean, the gist was, you know, Guybrush has, he's defeated LeChuck. And, you know, he goes around and it's like, hey, I did this great thing and nobody really knows about it or makes, makes a big deal about it. Like, yeah, yeah, what? Uh, who? <laughs> uh, and so he's trying to kind of trying to figure out how to follow up his his big achievement. And so were we. And so it was, uh, you know, just um, let's make another adventure and um, go from there. How do you reflect on that particular game compared to the original? Was it just as fun to work on? Was it challenging or just? Um, huh. I, just, I, I, I don't think it was quite as fun, um, just because it wasn't new, right? I mean, you know, right, yeah. sort of, uh, when everything is fresh and new, um, that has a certain sparkle to it that it, that it doesn't have the, the second time around, but it was fun to do. Uh, you know, there was that same creative vibe happening in the, in the room. Uh, and that, you know, it's got the, it's got the same tone, which is really uh, a fun tone to, to work in. Um, so yeah, you know, it still ranks high, uh, uh, on my list of funnest projects to, uh, to, to have worked on. Yeah. Good stuff. And obviously, I mean, it was after, after that particular game, again, huge successful game. Did you go straight to day of the tentacle? Was that always an idea in your mind or was there anything in between, uh, Dave, before you went we into that project? Um, it hadn't been a specific idea before the end of monkey two, but basically, um, that was the point at which uh, Tim and I were um, champing at the bit to do our own project. Yeah, and you know they were the, the powers that be were kind of like, yeah, it's time time to take the training wheels off. Really, you guys have probably yeah, yeah. learned all you're gonna learn, um, and we should give you a project. But just to be on the safe side, we're only going to give you one project between the two of you. Right, right. And they didn't they didn't want to out and out tell us what to do, but they suggested. Uh, that a sequel to Maniac Mansion might be nice. And we said, oh, yeah, we liked that. Um, you know, Maniac was really fun. We could uh, certainly do that. And uh, I think it was it was Kelly Flock, I think, at the time was running the division, was was astute enough to tell us, like, it's been like five years since the um, the last game came out. And it's dated, <laughs> right, to, to look at. So yeah, don't yeah. worry about making it look or feel the same you know just use the material that you can and kind of do your own thing with it and that was, at that point it was like we, we brought in uh, peter jan and larry here and we all thought this you know let's 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 try and make this be uh like a chuck jones cartoon and that'll be the vibe that we go for and so it feels super different from from maniac mansion maniac mansion is actually um you know it's got its serious side and i feel like day of the tentacle really kind of doesn't um it's definitely is like stepping into saturday morning cartoons uh that, that said i think it's one of the most cohesive things i've ever made um because the everything is sort of supporting that that single vibe it's not just the art it's also the um you know the dialogue is and the actual puzzles are forcing you to think like a cartoon character as you uh, as you solve it so it's, so it really does sort of draw you into the cartoon world and make you part of it which i think is is good 
it, it looks amazing. Um, I love the the time travel element as well. I think that's absolutely incredible. I've always been interested in time travel. Um, and actually, I think we might briefly talk about a, Monk, a Back to the Future game you worked on, it, it, ironically, a bit, a bit later in your career. But yeah. do, are you are you interested personally about time travel? Is that something you in sci-fi you find interesting? And if so, is there a particular era, that you, a date in mind, or would you travel to the future? I do like a good time travel movie. I, you know, I think I've seen probably 90% of, of what's <laughs> out there. I, you know, anytime I run across them, I'm like, oh, well, time travel, got to see that, of course. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know that there's a specific um, place that I would like to visit more than any other, maybe the, maybe the future, honestly. Like, I, I think if I had a time machine, um, I would go and visit all kinds of places because there are all kinds of things that'd be interesting to to see firsthand that you you know you sort of don't really know how they went I mean, going all the way back to you know dinosaur mm -hmm. times and, and stuff like that but i don't think i would want to stay in any of those places for very long i'm 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 really um i love modern conveniences i'm very dependent on them and i like i am old enough to remember the time before there were word processors and i wouldn't even want to go back and, and live then like I, I love my word processor and i need it um i might though take a trip forward into the future a little ways and see if we manage to solve any of our, our current problems in a nice way to like do things improve maybe i would stay there if uh if they did but I, uh, you know, I don't, I don't have high hopes about that. So we could be uh, run by uh, purple tentacles. You never, never know. I, I feel like purple tentacle is behind every closet door, waiting to jump out and take over. So, um, so after you know, again, what? What was the kind of um, vibe for you at LucasArts at the time? Was was it was it you feeling like massive success? Were you chomping at the bit to sort of move on a little bit? Because again, I don't want to speak for you, but you, I think you left quite soon after, or you kind of worked yeah. back on a is it a consultancy role again? I, I just want to sort of understand the, the next basically, yeah, stage. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Well, I, you know, massive success um, was not the vibe. I mean, uh, the, the game sold okay, um, but there there wasn't this you know the 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 um mystique around them took some time to build up i, th I think um we got we got a couple of awards for tentacle uh at the time but you know i mean the awards were smaller back then <laughs> the entire industry was pretty small um and i i i was um I got a little burned out uh, making Tentacle, and I was having uh, a little trouble figuring out what I wanted to do. And my personal life was also nose diving at the time, and so I was right. just sort of having a miserable time going into work oh, every day. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> and eventually, what I did was uh, I went on a like a vision quest. I, I took a leave of absence. I got on a bicycle and I rode uh, up the coast until I got to another country. Um, really? Which was uh, yeah, it was quite a <laughs> quite a long trip. Um, <laughs> And I, uh, along the way, I stopped in in, in Seattle, uh, where by by that time Ron had moved up there and had started uh, Humongous. Humongous. So he was there at the time, and I stopped in and talked to him. And by then, I I had figured out that I wasn't going to stay in the job; that I was I was going to leave uh, Lucas Arts and 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 do something where hmm. I could do a little more of the uh, designing and writing, and a little less of the sort of um, weighty responsibility of producing things and uh, being responsible for other people's output. Um, <laughs> ironically, I do way more of that stuff now, but uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, back then I was it, that was sort of weighing on me, and I, I just wanted to to get more writing done. And he said, uh, you know, call me when I, he had an agreement he couldn't um, solicit anybody who worked uh, at Lucas Arts, but right, he was just basically yeah. like, you know, if you do quit, give me give me a call. <laughs> right. right uh, so I went back and uh, and, and I did uh, I, I gave my two weeks. Um, and then ironically, the um, the first thing that I did after that was uh, went back and worked some more on Full Throttle, which I had yeah. dipped my toes into right before leaving. I was just about to go on the trip, and they said, "Well, you know, could you wait a few weeks?" um and just do like a draft of a script for full throttle because uh, tim has five thousand responsibilities he's just having trouble getting started so if you gave him something he could bang around and hate and rewrite then that would be good for him so so i did that and then went off and then um after uh, afterwards when when i went freelance they called me up but like a month later and said um there's this scene in the game that's a demolition derby 
Yeah. And um, we think that the only people who know enough about the scum system to make this work are are you and Tim. <laughs> Tim can't right. do it because he's too busy. Uh, would you be willing to to try and put this thing together? So, so there is that really awkward um, uh, demolition derby scene in full throttle that was programmed largely by me. Uh, using a system that wasn't designed to do that stuff at all. I mean, there's, there's, there's no, not, didn't even have floating point math in it. So we're trying to sort of calculate all these collision vectors and stuff <laughs> using just little integers and pickles. And uh, I don't know, it's not great, but it wouldn't be in the game at all. Um, I can picture it. I've, I've played it quite recently, the remastered version. I know exactly what that you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> that, again, I, again, Dave, I don't want to get in, into too much of, um, I don't want to be negative, but was was it a, it was the right time for you to lo- leave Lucas Arts? And do you think you got, full throttle was your last kind of thing? Was were you happy to kind of then cut ties? And and how do you how do you yeah. personally reflect back on that time at such a, a amazing company? Do you have mainly positive uh, stories that I take it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, it was a, a great group of creative people. Um, I really liked working with them. Uh, you learned a lot. It was a great place to start a career, honestly. Um, there was a pretty high turnover rate at the studio. And by the time I left, I think there were uh, only four people in the group who had been there when I started out of a couple of dozen. Um, so, you know, people think of it as like, oh, yeah, you work there and you would stay there forever. But actually, it was, it was, um, uh, it was very much a place where people would go and they would do some cool things and then they would start a studio or, or something like that and leave and leave and kind of go and do their own thing. So actually by the time I uh, started freelancing, I had a lot of contacts elsewhere in the industry or just yeah. people who used to work with me at, uh, at LucasArts. So it was not hard for me to find things to do, which is good because I'm apparently not that creative <laughs> finding things to do <laughs> on my own. I just, just sort of drift from uh, opportunity to opportunity. Yeah. And um, you kind of, mentioned it a bit earlier but obviously when when ron left um were you a bit gutted yourself was it quite sad when he decided to leave and do you, you obviously work with him a bit a bit down the line at humongous games so how how was that particular time i don't, I don't want to speak for ron obviously but was it, was it yeah was well sad time? I, I mean i was gonna leave with him actually right. that was the uh, initial plan tim was too uh until he said he was gonna move the he was gonna start the new studio in seattle instead of locally and we had you know with uh, local and family ties, Tim and I, uh, and so we said, "Well, I think I think we're gonna not come with you in that case, and we'll stay here and make Day of the Tentacle instead." Which uh, I'm, you know, I'm glad we did. Actually, that, that was a an important thing to <laughs> to do at the time. Um, yeah, and then uh, you know, I, I I have worked with Ron a bunch of um, sort of on and off over the years. I mean, I, you know, if he if he calls and I'm available, I try and I try and say yes. Um, we did uh, a couple of designs together, uh, kind of early, um, right, right, right after I started freelancing, um, that never got produced. That this was um, the idea was he was going to do adventure games for grown-ups uh, in the context of Humongous, which was, mm. a, was a studio that made children's games. But they were like, okay, we've got this children's game thing going now, and we want to have another, you know, like another label for adults. Which eventually they did do uh, start Cave Dog. Um, which was oh, yeah. which was that, uh, but there there are a couple of um, designs in a drawer somewhere uh, that Ron and I did, and I wrote scripts for wow. uh, that didn't get produced. And then he called me up one day and said, "I we, we're doing this Bedhead Ned game uh, about a little kid who dresses up like a superhero and kind of runs around in his pajamas. Eventually, it became called Pajama Sam." Uh, and we want it to be kind of weird. And you know, would you want to write that? I know you don't really do kids games but we think you'd be good for it so i said i oh, sure i'm not doing anything else and i just loved working on it it was so much fun yeah, yeah, um yeah. and you know there's something about this sort of you know wholesome atmosphere and writing on two levels writing for for kids but also for the grown-ups who are going to be playing with them and uh you know it was sort of um we did several of those uh and it would be like oh we'd get together and, and sort of work out the puzzles over, over about like three days and then I would go off for 12 weeks and just write a script and then just sort of hand it off. And then I didn't have to do anything else. And I they would just make that. a really yeah. great game out of it. <laughs> I, just, I enjoyed everything about that. So I sort of accidentally became then a, a children's game writer. 
uh, that other people would come to, and I, I worked with them uh, on some Disney Disney stuff and Fisher Price and some other companies. Uh, not really ever having intended to get into children's games at all, I just sort of fell into it and then but really enjoyed it. Oh, fair play! I mean, that's, that sounds quite fun actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's given a lot of great creative freedom. Um, obviously, you worked at Telltale Games as well. And some of those titles you worked on included, obviously, Tales of Monkey Island, some, yeah. some Sam Max games, and, and Back to the Future as well, which is you know, really interesting. Um, what was that chapter of, of your life like? Was it really different? And was it also quite interesting to work back on some, some old um, IPs or franchises? You know? It was. It was really different. Um, I mean, the focus of the... It was it was sort of like going from movies to TV. I think uh, the the focus of the studio was to try and do this episodic yeah. uh, delivery uh, over the internet and really um, make content uh, for games more on a something similar to a TV schedule or or actually a comic book schedule is really what we were taking our. Um, taking our inspiration from just like a monthly like you get it you kind of chew it over in a way that you don't necessarily do with a with a tv show uh before the next one comes out um and you know it turns out doing that is um there are a lot of challenges inherent wow. in it that uh, that you don't face when you're um just doing a kind of a you know one shot um blockbuster uh, game uh and we, you know, we spent a little time um, kind of building up the tool set for that. So that's 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 why the the first couple of games were not actually uh, done that way at that studio. And um, Sam and Max was really the first one. <laughs> they, you know, that's sort of the the day that the rights reverted to uh, back to Steve Purcell. I think was the yeah. game. game. And so, okay, well, we got to get ready to do this now. Um, so I'm 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 particularly proud of. Sam and Max saved the world. That that was the the first season, um, not necessarily because of what the results were, but because having done it at all felt like um, a massive stunt. Uh, you know, it was just so such a high wire act uh, trying to get the whole whole thing done because we'd be outlining um, one episode and designing the puzzles for it while writing the script for the previous episode. Uh, while directing production on the episode before that, so there wow. was sort of these, yeah. these whole, um, they, were, they overlapped like like shingles in the in their production process, and other people were sort of moving on, drawing the backgrounds, and then moving to the next one. Uh, but Brendan Ferguson and I were um, deeply involved with the whole thing, so we 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 got just sort of more and more work piled up on us uh, as the. <laughs> as the season went on and by the time we'd done six episodes we were both both about ready to die i i would assume you would just make one big game and just chop it up and uh, we just chop it up into five mm -hmm. or six pieces but that's really interesting and that does sound exhausting <laughs> it was exhausting yeah yeah i did a whole um gdc talk about why you don't do it that way right. why you don't just make one game and chop it up into pieces it really does need to each one needs yeah. to sort of be its own thing and we need to uh, sort of lead into each other in a certain way. And obviously, Tales of Monkey Island was this before Disney bought the rights of Lucas Art? I'm just trying to work out how the it the was. Among... Yeah, yeah, it was still Lucasfilm at that at that point. Although we <clears throat> we were we were dealing largely with the same person. Craig Derrick was uh, was running the um, he was in charge of the franchise uh, right. then and and now. <clears throat> um, yeah, and that was a weird one. I, I guess um, Dan Connors had been sort of talking to Lucasfilm um, and sort of behind the scenes about maybe doing Monkey for a long time. Mm. And I think what happened there was they got a new president, which they used to do about every two years. Um, I forget what it was, but um, he uh, uh, was a fan, I guess and started taking the discussions seriously. And so one day Dan called me in his office, he said, hey, we're gonna make Monkey Island game. And I said, we're gonna do what? <laughs> really? <laughs> um, that sounds kind of scary. Uh, are yeah. we sure about this? And uh, so I guess uh, I guess we should call Ron. He said, oh no, you can't, can't call Ron. No, no, no. <laughs> no, the whole thing's secret, can't tell him. Right. Uh, and, and and that was the point that at which I started to have my doubts about it. I just, you know, I just, that didn't, 
didn't feel right. Yeah. Uh, and I would, just, later, yeah. I would later learn that it, it was, that was mainly because uh, not all the contracts, I guess, were completely signed. Process, I now have a little more insight into it. It takes a little time to wrap these things up. Yeah. Uh, and and when, when I finally did get to call Ron, um, he was a little confused because he had, like a year before, been trying to get something going himself. And so there was right. like another kind of a weird vibe there. But he was nice enough to come and you know talk to us for a week about what we were about to do and and then off we went and that one was like by then um you know after really after uh the first season of sam and max uh i started directing all of the design writing at the studio and 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 we had more than one project going on so tales is sort of um you know i'm proud of what we did and I do think I had some <laughs> some impact on the direction. You know, I was meeting with the team every week and sort of um, making them stay true to the theme and you know making sure the yeah, yeah, design yeah. was good and stuff. But all the great ideas come came out of uh, Mark Darren and, and Mike Stimley and um, Joe Binney and Sean Vanneman on the middle episode and you know a lot, a lot of other people really um, uh, put all the goodness into into that series. I think. Uh, good on you. And uh, I think Telltale Games is, is it closed down, down now, Dave? Is that right? I don't think it's. Uh, uh... It's closed and there's a new one. Um, yeah, that, that was um, 2018. So by, by then I'd been, I'd been gone for four years. They just um, surprised everyone by um, essentially running out of money and, and having yeah. to shut down very suddenly. And I, I still had one or two friends there who were uh, sort of giving me the periodic, um, Right. Uh, dirt on what was coming, at, and and I still was surprised because they were surprised. They didn't they didn't see that coming. And of, after your, you know, that's a big big chunk of your career, really. But after that, what, what were you up to then? Did you did you work again with Ron on Thimbleweed Park? Is that right? I did not. Um, ah, my apologies. No, I have to play it um, later. No, uh, I started a, um, uh, a thing called Earplay with some some All other right. friends. I, I joined them. They were sort of already in progress uh, to make um, voice controlled audio games. So these were um, you know no visuals whatsoever, and you would do them on your uh, either on your your phone while you're walking around, or then uh, Alexa started to be a thing. So we started doing uh, oh, development wow. for that, um, and that I did for um, you know about five years before uh, before Monkey Island came along. Let, are we okay to talk about Return to Monkey Island? Is that all right? Um, sure. I, I'd love yeah. to know when you first heard that Ron had, um, I think, again, I don't put words in his mouth, but surprisingly got the rights to make a new game. Was it, were you part of those really early discussions? Or were you surprised? From, obviously, you're massively involved in this game, but I'd love to know how you first found out about it and how did Ron, I assume Ron told you, stuff like that. Oh, well, um, so Ron and I had been trying to get something else going a few months previously. Uh, so we actually had a uh, right. Slack that we had been using and, and uh, I had it <laughs> open on a side monitor. And he just IM'd me one day and said, hey, are you there? And I, I said, yeah. And he said, uh, can, can you talk? And I said, yeah. He said, can you keep a secret? <laughs> and I said, uh, yeah, I can. And now I'm really interested. So let's let's talk. And, and what he said was, um, he didn't have the rights, but he had been uh, talking to uh, this guy, Nigel Lowry at, at uh, Devolver, who had a friend at, uh, at Lucasfilm and thought that um, he could arrange something around the around the, the property to, to, to make another Monkey Island game. And Ron said, uh, so I'm thinking about it. And um, do you want to come partner with me on it? And let's make this together. And I said, uh, yeah. No, and just... you know he he kept uh he pitched me for probably about 10 minutes but i knew that my answer was yes like in the first minute <laughs> so definitely <laughs> i want to do that and he was he was a little more reticent he had he had um the same kinds of fears that i had when we started doing tales which was um my goodness there's a lot of nostalgia built up around this game now um nostalgia is not really a realistic realistic thing and it's going to cause people to have expectations that are bigger than what we can deliver and um what should we do and i think after tales i just decided i wasn't gonna let that stop me <laughs> ever anymore just like yeah i'm afraid of that but um so what let's let's make a game let's, let's make a good game so we um we arranged to meet up the following month after the holidays uh we got together for a couple of days and we just sort of talked about um 
thematically what we would like to cover and you know kind of when would it be in the in in the uh grand scheme of monkey island timing of everything and uh just kind of you know what what sorts of things we would we do with the game and by the end of the couple of days we had a sort of a rough plan and we felt like yeah i think we, we got something so let's let's say yes um and let's do it so we called up devolver and said yes and then it took seven more months to iron out all the contracts before we could actually uh, start making it seven months i mean yeah how on earth did you, did you keep it quiet? I'm surprised there wasn't a small leak here and there. I, I don't know, but it was amazing. It was obviously people have heard the story of um, Ron uh, kind of announcing it on April Fool's Day, wasn't it? It's quite infamous, actually, and absolutely incredible. And I, everyone thought it was a joke. I thought it's it unbelievable. But was there, was there ever a chance you thought was, this might sneak out or was there ever a little thing that you're really yeah. worried about? I remember there was one um, instance where on some forum somewhere someone had oh, no. said oh i got a friend at disney and he says there's another monkey on the game and we just oh. all just went oh, oh no this is like you know probably halfway through the production um and so we just said nothing and hoped that it would go away did you refresh <laughs> that forum <laughs> yeah and it did i didn't no, no other uh, mention was ever made of it and so i guess um Apart from that one, I, you know, I don't even know if that was a real thing. It might have just been yeah. wishful thinking on somebody's part. You know, but, I, but I didn't see anything else. And, you know, I, I, um, I have an elementary school age kid who I locked out of my office for two solid years right? Uh, so that he wouldn't know what I was working on because he understood what Monkey Island was by then. We'd, we'd been playing the games together. Uh, and, you know, I don't know how much he talks to his classmates and how much the teachers hear or any of that. So I just said, best to just, you know, yeah put the put the big lock on the door and not not that uh, yeah not that was that was uncomfortable you know i said for two years i couldn't talk to any of my friends about what i was doing and i just i don't much like keeping the secrets that, <laughs> that far locked down and was it always ron's idea to re release it or just or announce it i should say on um on April Fool's Day was that was kind of like his his thing. It was that was that was part of his pitch in those first that first ten so minute conversation we had was and I want to <laughs> announce it on April Fool's Day you know and I was aware of his his uh, notorious anti April Fool's Day stance and my my immediate reaction was that's a terrible terrible idea because I thought it was a joke I when I first saw yeah. it I thought oh, Ron's just, you know but <laughs> yeah and I you know I was worried a little about. Um, you know, people would think it was a joke and then we would have to fight against that. But then I slept on it and I thought, you know, that's not really true, actually. Yeah. It's, it'll, it'll, it'll make a splash and people love it. And I called them up and I said, you know what? That's not the worst idea ever. That's the greatest idea ever. <laughs> Should definitely do that. It must be fun for you and Ron to look at the reactions and see what people were thinking. It must have been quite an incredible time, actually. <laughs> after, oh, yeah. After keeping exciting. secret for so long, yeah. Yes. Yes, what a relief! Oh my goodness! Uh, to to yeah, to, I can tell my parents. I can tell my son. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It's, it's nice. Um, the trader came out, and again, I don't want to be negative, Dave, but there was a few people not happy with the artwork, and they were, oh, you know, this is not the, this is not like pixel art and so forth, and yeah, that that must have been disappointing. But again, I don't I don't want to speak too much about negative uh, feedback. But what was your reaction to that initially? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I mean, we had, we knew from the beginning that because we weren't doing pixel art, that there were there were going to be some objections to that. Um, I don't think we really expected them to dislike the style that we did choose that much. Mm. Um, and I don't know how much of it was really that, and how much of it was really this isn't pixel art, and therefore we don't like it. Um, but it it did feel very familiar to me because um, you know the whole nine years that i was at telltale we made a lot of games and we always had a um deliberately a a, a lot of interaction with the fan community that was part of the yeah. idea behind the studio was going to talk to these people a lot um and and inevitably anytime we announced anything we wouldn't even show people the art they would just assume we were going to screw it up and we wouldn't tell them who we were right. casting. We would just assume that we were doing a terrible job until we eventually put the game out and then they would all go, oh, this is really fun. And then they would, they would stop talking about that. But it just, just that kind of um, sort of knee jerk negative reaction was something I just got really used to. And I just mm. felt like, yeah, that's the internet these days. It just, it just happens. 
So I think I was less phased by it than maybe Ron and Rex were. Um, Ron did the brunt of it. They, they, people, people went straight to his blog, which was you know, kind of the worst part. I think on, on Twitter, you could sort of ignore that stuff. But, yeah, you know. um, but I think overall it's been positive, I think. And when it when yeah. it's come out, and again, I, I, I think this is true. I read it the other day. I think Ron might retweet this, but I think it's the fastest selling Monkey Island game of all time. And correct me if I'm wrong there, Dave, but it's, it is doing for, again, I don't know if you've got any numbers, how well it's doing, or you're allowed to share that, but the, the reviews have been really high. And I'm, I'm playing it right now. I haven't finished it. I'll put my hands up. I'm halfway through, I think, but I'm loving it. And how do you reflect on the initial, and it's still relatively early when it's come out, but what's, how are you feeling about the overall sort of uh, feedback of the game? Uh, I'm feeling great about it, actually. You know, <clears throat> I mean, I had had my worries. You know, any any time you sort of let something out into the world, you're yeah. concerned about what people are going to think about it. Um, but people have really loved it, and they've responded and and said they're crying at the end and stuff, and they're just like, wow, like, you know, okay, <laughs> um, fantastic. Uh, the reviews have been terrific, and uh, yeah, it is it, it is apparently the the fastest selling uh, Monkey Island game ever. That's you know not to say it's the fastest selling game ever. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. they, they wouldn't qualify for that, but um, I'll take what I can get. Oh, good on you, and I'm I'm I was. Um overblown when it was announced that it came out because i've been such a fan of the series over the years and and getting it back in the original creator's hands i think was quite special so it must be fun uh, again working with ron again does it feel like the old times a little bit the old the old the good old days maybe it really did um yeah and that was another thing that we were sort of trying to figure out that those first couple of days that we spent together is you know have we have we still got that dynamic that we remembered from all those many years ago <laughs> is it really like we remembered it or are we just making stuff up um and yeah you know it's still great to um get in a room with the guy and and, and toss ideas at the wall and, and see what happens i think we have a um a particularly good dynamic we we sort of respect each other's opinions um we're on the same page pretty often and then when we're not we we have good ways of figuring out uh, who's more more right? <laughs> you know, just by discussing it, you know, sort of nobody's being defensive about anything. We're just really trying to have a rational discussion about the merits of the puzzle or the story moment or whatever it is. And sometimes one of us goes, "Yeah, you know, I think you're, I think you're right. Let's do it your way." And other times, this is pretty rare. We we have to figure out who cares more, and mm. and just go that way. And that's that's a little dicier kind of a process, but generally generally works. Uh, good on you and um i mean do you have a particular favorite puzzle or, or even character within the return to monkey island that you're most proud of i went through a series of 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 favorite characters um it seemed like most of them were on lechuck's crew i really like the the crew um and that was one of our first ideas was let's get into um what it's like on lechuck's ship and yes, you know, who's, yes. who's there and really sort of flesh that out instead of just having a bunch of generic ghosts there. Um, and I, I think by the end, uh, Putra was my favorite new character. And it might just be because you, you sort of get to talk to her more than most of the others. She kind of um, has a little buddy buddy thing um, that you get into and, and really um, yeah. you can sort of see what makes her tick a little more. So I had a lot of fun writing her. Um, but at other times it was, uh, you know, it was Flare Gory, and uh, for a while it was uh, Iron Rose, and you know, I just sort of liked all of those, all of those people on the ship quite a lot. You know, everybody's fun in their own, <laughs> their own special way. Um, <laughs> as far as puzzles are concerned, I, I think my favorite one is it's it's not even much of a puzzle, more of an activity. Is the the storytelling thing that you do? I don't know how far you are in the in the game, but have you gotten to the tell a story part? I haven't yet. No. I haven't oh, okay. exactly, yeah, I'm, I, I mean, I'm not exactly how far I've got through it, but um, uh, yeah, I'm still relatively early in the game, but I'm, I'm really enjoying it so far, I have to say. No. I don't even know, and this is how bad I am, that whether the secret of Monkey Island is revealed. So you can, you know, I'm, I'm trying to keep quiet of that. So you can, you can still, in your head go, you can point and laugh at me now, but <laughs> 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 little wink there, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm really enjoying it though, I have to say. It's really good to have it back. And I mean, is it going to be released physical copies? Do you think of the game? I think it's is it digital at the moment, like downloaded. Do you reckon it could be a physical Switch game or PC game? Or oh, that's just one of those many many things where um, 
there's a tweet I have pinned actually uh, from Terrible Toy Box, which is um, there. There are two possible reasons why we're not answering your question. Um, one <laughs> is we have nothing to say, or, and one is we have nothing to say yet, well, <laughs> and we can't. Answer. You know, sort of <laughs> reveal the difference between those. Things, so do you, do you feel, Dave, there would there could ever be another Monkey Island game, uh, personally, or do you think maybe this is the the end of the era, the end of the story, or, or, or would you never say never? Maybe. I doubt this would be the end, honestly. Um, and it, what I've been saying is, I don't, I don't know if I'll have anything to do with the, the next burn or not. That's that's uh, that may not even be up to me. Um, mm. But it seems like there certainly is um, desire for more Monkey Island stories, and as long as there is desire for more Monkey Island stories, there probably will be more Monkey Island stories. Oh, well, that's, I'm sure people are very happy to hear that. Um, again. Um... Ron, I think Ron hinted, or maybe put out a tweet, kind of hinting about this about made it mansion might there might be a comeback, uh, there might be a new game in the series, and obviously you worked on the produced day of the tentacle. Would is there any truth in that, or can you reveal any details? Or is that all hush hush? Well, well, I, I can tell you, Ron was just kidding when he said that, and, and oh, what right. he was actually talking about was remaking the original Monkey oh, right. Maniac Mansion. Um, Fair enough. <laughs> you know that could happen. There could be a new game in the series. Any of that stuff is possible, but there aren't actually current plans for any of it. Oh, fair enough. No, um, not that I know of. <laughs> no, no, fair, <laughs> fair dues. Um, could be a secret for me. You never know. Yeah, it could, it could be. Um, before I forget, I, I'm sure you've seen this, but Uncharted Four. I don't know if you've heard, played the game, or heard the game. It's a really nice. Uh, Easter egg. Uh, there's a famous painting which clearly shows Guybrush Threepwood. I don't know if you've seen it or heard about this, yeah, but well, well, it. It was, how amazing was that when you heard about that? Because apparently uh, the man that made Uncharted is a big fan. Apparently. Yeah, I uh, I love it when people do that that kind yeah. of stuff. There's uh, uh, Sea of Thieves too has uh, has uh, some some references to Monkey Island in it, which are which are fun. So cool. And Neil Druckmann is of course um, makes an appearance That's in it. our game. <laughs> so. All right. <laughs> um. Thank you so much for your time today. I mean, a real pleasure, a real honor. I've got a few last minute questions to ask, but I really do appreciate it. I mean, what's your next, what are you working on now, uh, Dave, if you don't mind asking? Is there any more games you can talk about? Or I know you've done a lot of a lot of writing and, and there's other stuff you do. So what sort of what other projects are you working on right now? Oh, I've got some, uh, I've got some pitches to work up, but I have decided not to work on them until after Halloween because Halloween is a, a thing. At my house, and uh, you know, there's a bunch of. I, I've got my pumpkin behind me. I'm oh yeah, yeah, brilliant. I, just, I, got, I got a car of that still, and and I do an event for for friends every year, which is a storytelling uh, gathering. We just get together on Halloween night and tell tell each other ghost stories and stuff. So I'm still I'm working on my story for that, <laughs> which uh, as we, as we are recording this, it's it's a few days away. So oh, my apologies, get, uh, yeah. <laughs> gotta get her done and then yeah after that i got some uh i got a few ideas put that way oh bless you I, I actually i always like to ask my guests was there any game i know you spoke about ideas in the cupboard any games that you worked on at lucas arts or uh that, that you're really quite proud of but never quite made it out or it's unreleased games basically is there one you can you're happy to talk about really briefly oh unreleased games wow well i i mentioned um the two that I that I designed with Ron, and I, I really feel like those probably wouldn't hold up today. Right. Like we probably shouldn't make make those now. Um, there was one was a western, and one was a sort of jungle adventure, and they starred the same two characters. The idea was going to be that oh, wow. there was a sort of a stable of actors there who were in all the games and just played different parts. Um. But those those might be the only remaining ones. There was there was a thing that I did at Earplay called the Orpheus Device, which was based on a role playing game, and that for various reasons got finished, but then wasn't going to get released. Um, right. like our, our agreement with the studio ended, and then it wound up under different leadership, and the, the, whole, the whole thing went under. And I just felt like. Oh, this is actually really fun. And you know, it's one of these voice controlled things and it was really this creepy horror piece. And uh and then about two years went by and we finally were able to release it. So I think you can I think you can play it on a, on Alexa now. Oh nice. Good. Yeah, good stuff. Um two final questions and I'll leave you to it, Dave, and I really appreciate your time. But this is a hard question actually. Do you have a top three personal favorite video games of all time? Top three ever. Could be any genre, any any. Oh, wow, 
I mean, I like different things for for different reasons. Um, certainly, uh, Colossal Cave Adventure was, um, you know, I played that in like 1978, and that was, you know, that was my first adventure game. It was the only adventure game nice. uh, at the time, and 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 that's one where uh, even 10 years later, I found it really frustrating to to try and revisit it and play it, but it left its indelible mark on me and, you know, many of my, many of my design compatriots too, uh, just by, you know, kind of setting the, setting the ball rolling uh, for adventure games in, in general. Um, I love uh, Link to the Past. I, I oh, still yeah. revisit that one every once in a while, just such a great, um, it's just so elegant and yeah. it just unfolds so nicely and it's always sort of um foreshadowing its next big moment and its next big piece of gameplay and next tool and stuff and i, I sort of take Fantastic. that as a um an inspirational sort of structural masterpiece uh, that i like to you know i've played that one with my son too that's classic yeah uh what else what else do i play a lot um I just recently uh, was revisiting all of uh, Monument Valley, actually, for some okay. reason. Um, it's just so uh, soothing, I think. When I want something uh, that's sort of soothing to, to, to just sort of um, uh, path my way through, I get that out. Just keep it on my phone for that purpose. Oh, bless you. Well, yeah, good choices. And um, I've actually asked you this before in the text uh, into many, many years, well, a few years ago now, it's not many years, but if you could share a few drinks with any video game character, who would you choose and why? And you can you can change your answer or keep to your original one if you remember, but um, who would you like to have a few drinks with around, mm. around the bar? Have a, a few pints of grog, maybe. Well, somebody fun. Uh, Stan's a good talker. You know, I might... I might uh might have drinks with him uh you know then i i wouldn't have to hold up my end of the conversation at all i could just you know kind of listen to him go um elaine's probably got better things to talk about though <laughs> uh these are these are uh, these are just our characters though I really yeah it could be about uh um folks from mm -mm, folks from other games um, i believe you, you you told us in the text interview that link would be a good <laughs> good person to talk to because he's very quiet obviously yeah he's very quiet he never says anything that's <laughs> easy you, we should just get link and stan at the table together wow yeah two opposites they uh, might connect mightn't they <laughs> you know it's stan can sort of blah 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 sell 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 and link can just sort of nod and <laughs> yeah drink beer no, oh well, I'd, I'd join him. That sounds a fun, a fun evening, to be fair. But um, Dave, thank you so much. It's a real pleasure, real honor. Good luck with your future uh, endeavors and, and your, your books and games and so forth. And I'm really looking forward to finishing off Return to Monkey Island. I, I mean that. So thank you so much for all your work on the amazing games. Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Thank you.